I remember tweeting out after I saw it at Sundance, talking about how pissed off I was, the fact that I didn't know who Polly Murray was as a graduate of Howard University. And wow. Polly got um, a law degree from Howard. So right. I was like, how do I not know who this person is? So having said all of that, how did you and Betsy come to find out about Polly? Yes, well, we found out about Polly Murray uh, in uh, kind of the best way possible, which was directly from Ruth Bader Ginsburg when we made the film RBG. Um, oh, wow. As, as we talk about um, in My Name is Polly Murray, um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, as a young lawyer in 1971, put Polly Murray's name as a co author on a brief that RBG was writing for the US Supreme Court, arguing that women should have equality under the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Now, Polly Murray was actually was not literally an author of that brief, but Polly, this lawyer and activist and poet and amazing person that a lot of people haven't heard about, actually did develop that idea before RBG had it, developed the idea that you could use the Constitution and the 14th Amendment specifically for gender equality, not just racial equality. RBG had read, had read Polly's work and said, you know, this is such an important contribution to these ideas that I'm arguing that Polly deserves an, a credit as co-author. It's not something that a lot of lawyers uh, were doing at the time or do now to, to start listing co-authors when, when, uh, when they don't have to, to really attribute the, the ideas. Um, you know, but RBG did that. We saw that on the brief. We we're like, oh, who's this Polly Murray person? Like, um, but uh, tr truthfully, we talked about it a little maybe, but didn't get too into it until after RBG was released and people was, were sort of starting to tell us how hungry they were to hear more about contributions that have been made to the history of American law and activism that we don't all know about. And that led us to looking more into Polly and every amazing thing that Polly accomplished in a lifetime. Speaking of accomplishments, how did you, how did you all find um, Polly's, I think it's the executor of her estate, Karen Ross Rouse, is that her, how you pronounce her name, Rouse? Uh, Karen Rouse Ross. I Rouse I Ross. I, I inverted it. Um, who <laughs> is Alexia kicked in? <laughs> who, who is Polly's grandniece and the executress of uh, of Polly's estate? Uh, they were close in life. Obviously, Polly was elderly when Karen was a young woman. Um, but um, you know, we connected with uh, Polly's estate through an agent that that represents the the estate and represents an author named Patricia Bell Scott who also had written a book about about Polly Murray and uh, they led us to to Karen who um, you know was a, a fantastic resource and connection to have because you know she knew Polly not as some monumental historical figure but as as a human being um, who she was really close to so Polly was denied admission to UNC Chapel Hill. Here we are in November, 2020, and it's the same thing happening again. When do you think they're finally gonna get on the train and go, you know what? You don't have to be a certain gender or a certain race to pursue an education. UNC just said to Polly, when Polly applied for, um, it was for a graduate program in sociology, UNC sent back a letter saying like, yeah, I'm sorry, but like people of your race and literally used that phrase, like that's not, you know, our, the constitution of our state and like we, and the university, our policies, yeah, we just don't look at people of your race. Like we don't, we won't even consider you, forget it. Polly was rightfully and understandably outraged by this. And then uh, some years later, um, when Polly was trying to go to Harvard Law School, where Polly rightfully ha had a had a so 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 Polly went to, to Howard Law School and graduated right. first in the class. Um, Howard at that point had a tradition where there was a fellowship that went to the number one student at Howard where they automatically would be accepted into Harvard Law School for a master's program for like the next step up uh, in law. Um, and in that case, 
Harvard wrote Polly a letter and said, yeah, um, you know, based on your picture and your prefix, which was miss, um, like we, we don't take, <laughs> we, we won't take your kind because you're a woman. Now, of course, Polly, um, as the film goes into, uh, was a gender non-conforming person who by today's standards would be either a trans man or non-binary. We're not entirely sure how Polly would identify, but was identifying in the world and was self-presenting at that time as a woman. So uh, Harvard was like, no women. UNC was like, no African-Americans. And as uh, one of our great uh, talkers in, in, in the film, uh, Professor Brittany Cooper from Rutgers says, like every institution is keeping, is keeping Polly away of things that not only that she wants, but that she absolutely rightfully deserved for these arbitrary and really foolish reasons. Is, this is someone who went to the trouble to preserve the records, not only the paperwork and the diaries and the legal papers, but also beautiful vintage photographs, uh, dozens of hours of audio tape and even some videotape. Polly, like the world may not have been ready for Polly, but Polly was ready to ready face the world. future generations. Yeah, Polly went to a lot of trouble, saved everything and took it to an archive or had had grandniece Karen bring it to, to the archive on the Schlesinger Library at Harvard to preserve it for future generations to see and find. And we Julie, it's so wonderful to talk to you and to see you. I hope the next time that we have a conversation, it is in person and, you know, maybe on another rooftop somewhere. Oh, I was going to say on a rooftop <laughs> in LA, that's where I want to meet. I think there was even, there might've been some, even some uh, nice, nice snacks there. So I'll, I'll... Oh, there was some nice snacks and cocktails. And you know, I'm always good for a snack and a cocktail. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Julie. Great to see you.